So guys, so let's begin with the second session on session only. And in this session, we will try to revise the basic fundamentals of exception handling, what we have we have discussed in the last class. And we will try to proceed further with the new concepts. So in the last class, we have discussed uh, the difference between exception and exception handling. And we have seen that exception is by by dictionary meaning it's just an abnormal condition so an abnormal condition where which is actually an event that basically disturbs the normal flow of the program and uh, that leads to the termination of the program so that means if we have got 10 statements and uh, there is a abnormal condition that occurs at line number say for example 4 so that particular line number 4 uh, will not be will be creating a problem and then subsequently uh, line number 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10 will not be executed. Only line line number 1, 2 and 3 will be executed and you can see the results of these three lines. But if, uh, uh, if this particular situation of, uh, of you know popping up this uh, uh, abnormal condition, if that is handled so in that case, we provide an alternative routine, alternative path or alternative flow of control for that particular abnormal situation so that when that situation occurs, we have something else to do and let the rest of the program from line, line number say 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10 to continue with its normal operation. So this mechanism of handling the exception or the problem that occurs at the runtime, this is called as exception handling in Java. Now there is a difference between exceptions in Java and the exceptions that you see you might have seen in, in the uh, uh, in a language like C++. So the basic difference uh, in these two languages is that. In C++, the exception could be just a you know a integer or a character, but here in Java, an exception is always an instance or an object of a particular class, and the name of the class is itself an indicative of the of the nature of the exception because the name is given in such such a way that it's more verbose to tell you what is the exception which is actually occurring. So remember in Java. The exception means an object or an instance of a particular class. So uh, I have got a ready-made code already with me, but uh, I will try to fix some part of the code and create a new class. Uh, so this is the new class by the name expdemo.java under the package exception it is for demo. And it has got a main method and uh, I have just copied two particular methods from that particular earlier written code. And those two methods are string care add position and uh, array traversal. So you can see uh, the Java code convention has been followed over uh, by writing both of the methods, and uh, they follow the camel case. In the case of a string care add position method, you can see there is string uh, by the name, uh, by the variable uh, name as name of the type of string that contains the value sha and space Imran space alum. So uh, the other line system dot dot uh, at line number 12 basically what it does is is trying to print the character at position 14. So uh, basically uh, the string uh, class itself maintains the string uh, value as a sequence of character character is stored in a character array. So typically what we have in a in an array is that the index position starts from index uh, from position 0 so when I say character 14 that typically means I am looking for character which is at, at actually at absolute position of 15 right starting from 0 it's 14 that means the absolute position is 15 so Similarly, we have got another method, array traversal method, and this array traversal method is actually the way we we try to traverse uh, in the earlier case of a string character position. So 
to the string one of the character of the string at a particular index position similarly here we are trying to we have got an int array we have got uh, uh, integer 1 2 3 and 4 and integer 1 is at position 0 index position 0 integer 2 is at uh, index position 1 index 3 is at index position 2 and index 4 is at index position 3 so when the loop says i is equal to 0 i less than 5 that means the loop is iterating from 0 till 4 that is 5 times and we don't have five elements uh, in the array so that means uh, when we try to assess the fifth element which is not uh, within the limits or within the bound i, I would rather say uh, prefer to say bound of this array so that particular uh, element uh, uh, trying to assess that particular element is going to create a problem and that that that's a abnormal pro problem that that shows us, us at the runtime and that's an exception basically so so we are just trying to put a call to this particular method and trying to call it call this method and as soon as we call it we see that uh, for the loop which is start from index position 0 to uh, 3 uh, the element 1 2 3 and 4 are uh, are printed and then uh, we get a uh, uh, exception java dot lang dot array index out of board exception for index position 4 you can see this this whole this is a fully qualified name of the exception class array index bound uh, uh, array index out of bound exception which is in java dot lang package you know that java dot lang package is something which we do not need to import uh, this is the only package which, which we did not did not need to import in java Otherwise, if you want to use, uh, say, for example, uh, Java.io package or Java.util package, then you need to import those package, packages before you can make use of any of the classes in the package. So, uh, as we have said that every exception is an object of the class, so that means the exception or the error that occurs, the abnormal condition that, that has occurred while trying to assess uh, the element at index position 4, which is actually the fifth element and the fifth element is not existent in the array that is beyond the scope of the size of the array so this particular exception is a, an object of the class array index out of bound exception now in the last class we have also seen the difference between the two types of exceptions one was called as checked exception and the other was called as unchecked exceptions. Unchecked exceptions are also called as runtime exceptions, and checked exceptions are, are also sometimes called as uh, referred as compiled exception. So don't confuse with the with the term compiled exception and the runtime exception for the checked and unchecked exception because every exception actually comes at the runtime. When the program is in execution, you will see an exception coming over there. Uh, it, it just uh, the checked exception is called as compiled time exception just because of the reason because we know that the checked exceptions are the one for which we need to put a try and catch block and unless and until we don't provide a try and catch block that means we don't handle that exception we will get a compilation error and our code will not compile so because our code will not compile unless and until I put a try and catch block so that means that's a compile that's a, that's a checked exception or a compile time exception but the exception always comes at the runtime only uh, as we can see in our case uh, when we call this array traversal method uh, even though we have not provided a try and catch block we didn't get a compilation error that means the exception that is array index out of board exception that was actually thrown that was actually thrown at the time of uh, when the problem occurred while assessing the in element at index position uh, fourth which is the fifth element which was not existent so that uh, array index out of board exception is certainly a, a runtime exception or unchecked exception which was not required to be checked that means the, the developer doesn't have the obligation to basically put a try and catch block across it it's up to the uh, to the willingness of the developer that whether if he wants to handle this exception he can provide a try and catch block 
and if he doesn't want to uh, you know handle the exception uh, so he will not, he will just not provide a try and catch log and leave it as it is so in case he doesn't provide an exception so in that case what will happen is uh, the exception will occur uh, at the runtime it will show you this checklist here this checklist is not being shown as in the earlier case because i have instead of printing this checklist i have chosen to print the cause and the cause is being shown as null because null is shown uh, at times where uh, you know you are not sure about you know the cause of the uh, exception or even if the cause is non existent non known uh, so you can just go through the code uh, how about the exception get cost exception dot exp dot get cost method you will you will see the note or uh, uh, the help uh, for the particular method and uh, rather java documents documentation so you can see tells you details about what is the meaning of the value detail so uh, this is uh, a similar method is string caret position and uh, uh, we have seen that because we have put a try and catch block in array traversal method and uh, the exception is being caught in the catch block so uh, if I write another line of a statement after this catch block ends that is a call to a string caret position method so basically uh, when the exception uh, of array index out of bound is caught uh, in the catch block uh, it is certain that my execution or the normal flow of the control will not terminate abruptly rather it will reach it is guaranteed to reach to the next line of the code uh, now because of the uh, not similarity in the name naming convention so I have changed the name to string traversal just to match with array traversal and I have used the refractor method uh, of, uh, that is provided by the ID and the source instead of uh, right clicking and renaming it and the benefit that I get for with the refractor method is that every reference to that particular method see, say for example here this is string traversal um, method call this is also being renamed automatically without me putting an extra effort to rename it so um, always use uh, the refractor functionality if uh, you want to change the name of the variable or if you want to change the name of the method or for similar activities so that uh, that particular uh, values are already you know all the references are already are, are automatically changed as you, you have just noticed that uh, for the distinct traversal method uh, in the caret uh, uh, caret method I have given the index position as 4 and my string is shah space imran space alam that I am actually traversing so Uh, that means uh, my controls uh, after the occurring of the exception in the array when the call of the array traversal method uh, the exception occurs my control uh, after reaching to the cache block will come out of the cache block and reach to the next line in sequence that is line number 15 which is a call to the string traversal method and it's supposed to print a, the particular character which is at the character position which is at the index position 4. So you can try to run uh, this program and uh, you see the uh, result doesn't changes it, it is printing 1 2 3 4 and then the exception occurs and the cause is being printed null and then we were expecting uh, uh, the character which must which must have be, should have been printed by the method called to string traversal the character which is at the position number 4 for the name variable which is of the type string but the character at position 4 because it starts from index 0 it is uh, the empty character as it started at position 0 at, at position, position 3 and the 4th is the empty character so 
it must have been printed but we are not able to see so when i change it the position at five you can see the i is being printed over there and uh, uh, that that indicates that uh, we have successfully um, you know handled the exception and the program did not terminate it abruptly and we have reached to the next line of the program uh, without uh, you know affecting the normal flow of the control although the cache block has provided an alternative path uh, we have not chosen to do much uh, in the cache block but uh, that cache block is always to provide some alternative path uh, to basically to deal with the situation So basically we know that Java try block is something which is used to enclose the code that may probably throw an exception or which is the code which might have a problem and and the cache block is uh, is the block which is basically the one which is going to provide the alternative path in the case the problem occurs. Now we are changing, uh, uh, we are trying to uh, Traverse to uh, index position 55 for a string shine and alum, and we know that the string length is not uh, is much less, lesser than 55. So we get Java dot length dot string index out of bound exception. Uh, and uh, in, in the case of array traversal, we have reduced it to you know to uh, to the limit which is all which was within the bound of the array. So we didn't get the first exception that is array index out of bound exception in that case. And Rather, we have seen a string index out of bound exception. The fully qualified name for a string index out of bound exception is also Java dot length dot string out of bound exception. That means it is a Java dot length package. You can see this is a stack trace. Stack trace means that you start with exp demo dot Java line number 15, the, the place from where you make the call to uh, string traversal method uh, in the main method of the exp demo class under the exception underscore demo package, and then the control goes to the uh, to the line number 23 of a string traversal uh, method where you try to assess uh, the particular line using the method caret position and that caret is further you know calling some of the methods so this is what we call as a stack trace it's starting from the root cause uh, the uh, uh, the root cause of the from where the actually the exception generated is at the top of position and the call to the root cause uh, call to the root cause is basically uh, is uh, uh, you know written written uh, in steps uh, in subsequent steps in the downward uh, sequence. So it's like you know uh, the caret position if it throws an exception uh, because it's not able to find a particular character uh, at uh, at a particular uh, index position that index is out of bounds for for the string. So and that particular method itself has not handled that exception. So it has, you know, sent the exception back or popped the exception back to the calling method, which was, uh, uh, which was basically a string traversal method, and the string traversal method also did not had a try and catch block so to handle the situation. So it was again popped to uh, the main method, which has basically the try and the catch catch block. In the situation, if we have not put the try and the catch block in here in uh, here in you know the main method, this exception would, would have you know further uh, you know popped up and would have reached the JVM to basically print which would have basically print the stack trace. So that's the situation like if you do not handle it will keep up, up popping uh, popping a level up to the caller until it reaches the JVM and it's blast. So uh, what we can do is instead of having two separate try and catch blocks for array traversal and string traversal uh, or rather the two different natures of exceptions one is array index out of bound exception and the, array, the other is string index of bound ex out of exception we could put both the code together under one try block and uh, uh, we can choose uh, uh, if uh, you know like having uh, you know multiple catch blocks one after the other in the sequence so one is the array index out of bound exception the other is the string index out of bound exception. 
let's try to uh, look at the type hierarchy of array index out of bound exception you see the array index out of bound exception was actually you know the child class of index out of bound exception uh, and uh, suppose that if uh, let, let me just type you know uh, index out of bound exception uh, this index out of bound exception is the name of the class that is very much similar to our index out of bound exception and string out of bound exception just is keeping the two words array and a string uh, which are the prefixes to to this class so let's try to see the class hierarchy it's another class and if you see this index out of bound exception is the parent class of both array index out of bound exception and it's string out of bound exception so it's very much like saying that animal is the parent class of uh, you know um, lion and it's also the parent class of a dog or it's the parent class of a fish so similarly index out of bound exception is more general uh, is indicative of more general type of problem that might occur uh, uh, which is not specifically basically telling you about whether it's uh, uh, the problem of index out of bound is exception of uh, index out of bound is happening because of the reason of the because we are trying to traverse the array or because we are trying to traverse the string so that is more general in nature so we know that the concept of abstraction the parent class is basically uh, uh, intended for abstraction that is uh, to extract the common things which are a level up from the child classes so the animal class contains everything which belongs to uh, all sorts of animals whether it be a cat dog or a lion or whatever right so in that case uh, the animal class is a is a level up abstraction similarly index out of bound abstraction is a class which is the abstraction to the array index out of bound exception and string out of bound exception and we can also see that index out of bound exception is the child class of runtime exception this is the name of the class runtime exception uh, and the runtime exception is also the child of another class which is called exception and this exception is another uh, is the child of another class throwable and throwable is finally the child of the super uh, class of all classes which is the object class so just try to remember this hierarchy class hierarchy we will come to it uh, again so Suppose if we do not have this uh, uh, string out of bound exception and we have just uh, 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 replaced this index out of bound exception with uh, uh, in place of these two exceptions and let's try to understand what happens. Let's run this code and let's see. Uh, actually, the exception that occur is uh, is just either in the case of array index uh, array traversal or in the case of string traversal. But we have handled it and we have tried to print the cause and the cause was coming as null, so it's, uh, it's not giving us indication uh, that what is the reason of the exception. But however, there is a reason that this exception has occurred that is index out of bound exception has occurred but there is no indication whether this is because of the array traversal or because of the string traversal so just like uh, the reference type of a parent class can uh, can basically hold the reference to the object of the child class like animal a can have can be said as equal to new dog or animal a could also be said as equal to new cat at the runtime, uh, so in uh, similarly, index out of bound exception is the parent class of array index out of bound exception as well as string out of bound exception. 
so whatever exception occurs whether it's a it's about array it's about a string both the exception would be caught by this index out of bound exception because it's a parent class of both the class this is very much in the same in line in the concept like we have got a method and that method has a parameter of say animal a and whether we pass cat or cat object or the dog object or the fish object or whatever animal is there that variable a is going to hold the reference of of that uh, uh, concrete uh, you know object of the of the nature of the dog cat and fish whatever it be although when we try to execute the uh, particular method on the part on uh, on on the reference variable animal a reference variable a of the type of animal that is going to execute the method of the particular type of object so similarly goes the case over here now uh, what we have done is uh, we have tried to put a string out of bound exception uh, separately rather to handle this situation uh, explicitly if we get exception from a string traversal method but uh, what we have done is uh, we have put index out of bound exception in the first cache block and a string index out of bound exception in the second cache block so what happens is whether array index out of bound exception occurs because of the array traversal method or a string index out of bound exception occurs because of the string traversal method the first cache block which comes in the sequence is tested against the exception so even if it is a array traverse uh, array index out of bound exception the index out of bound exception is a parent class and so it sees it as a compatible block and enters the block if it is a string uh, out of exception uh, a string index out of bound exception then also uh, the index out of bound exception is the parent class of a string index out of bound exception and it is again a compatible parent class so which can refer to the child class object and so the the control reaches to the first first cache block itself and the second cache block becomes immaterial and uh, the the uh, basically the error that you have seen is uh, that unreachable code the compiler is, the compiler is smart enough to tell you that that code is unreachable that will never be reached because that problem is already caught by the parent class so if we want to be more specific we have to bring the more specific exception in the first cache block and then the less specific or more abstract exception in the subsequent cache block for example if i put a string index out of bound exception in the first cache block then if a string out if the string traversal method throws the string out of bound exception then the first first cache block will be entered <coughs> otherwise if array traversal method throws array index out of bound exception because of we are trying to assess uh, uh, element at a position which is out of bound of the array then in that case first cache block will be skipped because that's not of that nature so the second cache block which is of the parent class of the array index out of bound exception that will be matched because of the compatibility reason of the parent class and the control will come into the second cache block in that case so always make sure that you put the in the cache block you put the child class before the parent class otherwise the the code will remain unreachable and you will get a compilation error in that case so this is one of the question which is probably asked in many of the interviews and uh, you know uh, those uh, uh, examination written examination for java and you will see such kind of uh, situations and uh, there will be a lot of options available and uh, most of the time you will not uh, take care that whether the sequence is right or not Now let's try to open this index out of bound exception in uh, type hierarchy. Just to revise again the same thing. Index out of bound exception has got two childs: array index out of bound exception and string index out of, out of bound exception. But this index out of bound exception is directly, uh, you know, child of runtime exception, which is again the uh, child of exception. And then this exception is something which is being derived from the throwable class. Now let's try to understand what is this throwable class. See, uh, this throwable class is directly derived from the object class, and it has got two subclasses: error and exception. So 
so basically uh, all the problems that may occur at the runtime are divided into three category one is error and the other two comes under the subcategory of exception one is checked up exception the other is unchecked exception so you can see uh, the error there are uh, two subclasses again one is a linkage error which is a concrete class and that is also a subclass of certified link error that is the linking problem if happens and the other is a virtual machine related error which has got one exception as internal uh, one error as internal error and the other is out of memory error out of memory error basically is the most uh, uh, you know uh, easily seen you know error that uh, people encounter and that is because of the extreme condition of memory leaks or too much of creation of you know uh, uh, certain objects in case of while we try to parse you know long these files and we do, we do certain mistakes you know for them so and then exception is further you know as i said you there are two exceptions checked and unchecked exception so the classes which are directly the subclasses of the exception class like this uh, you know clone not supported exception insufficient fund exception and you can see uh, io exception and these all exceptions are basically you know these are checked exception and the exception which comes under the subclass of runtime exceptions they are the one which are called as uh, unchecked exceptions so automatic exceptions uh, uh, class class exception then illegal uh, state exception, index out of bond exception, the sub child sub index out of bond exception, array index out of bond exception, string index out of bond exception, exceptions, null point exceptions. These are the very common uh, runtime exception or unchecked exception. That means we need, do not need to put a try and catch block, and they will certainly have the runtime exception in their class hierarchy somewhere. Whereas this IU exception doesn't have a runtime exception as uh, in in their class hierarchy upwards that means it doesn't have a parent class runtime exception it has a parent class which is directly the exception class so if the parent class is directly the exception class that's a checked exception if the parent class is not directly the uh, uh, the exception class but somewhere in the uh, in between runtime exception comes into picture that means that exception is an unchecked exception So we have got array index out of bound exception, we have got a string index out of bound exception, they both have a parent class index out of bound exception, index out of bound exception has got a parent class runtime exception. So the runtime exception itself has got a parent class exception because runtime exception is also again a type of exception. But runtime exception is coming in between, so everything which is below runtime exception, they all are unchecked exception. And then this exception class itself is the part of uh, is the subclass of this prohibited class, that means uh, when we say the both the child of the throwable class that is error, error and exception both are throwable so everything which is the subclass of the throwable class that means that could be thrown and that could be caught in the catch block So just uh, make a note of this class hierarchy as it is very important to understand and uh, you will try to uh, you know understand a few in the last class we have seen the IO exception as well which was a checked exception and we have seen that file not found exception was one of the uh, one of the important case in that case when uh, we try to open up uh, file and that file particular file doesn't exist at a particular location and that was a very obvious situation and uh, the developer of this file not found exception choose to make it a checked exception because of the reason because you they think that you have you should have some alternative path to handle the situation or you should have a solution to this situation if the file is not found probably you might uh, get into some network location and get pick the file from there or you can uh, set up a default file to pick up.
now let's try to do something else let's uh, let's uh, you know uh, put the first cache block as runtime exception and uh, then the next cache block is string out of bound exception and the third cache block as index out of bound exception so you can see both this uh, the second and the third cache blocks they start showing the compilation error the compilation error is obvious obviously it's the uh, it's uh, it's a it's the message if you try to see it will show you that it's the uh, unreachable code basically and the reason why it was showing unreachable code is because runtime exception is the parent class of all these exceptions so if that is caught first the rest of the code will will not be you know reached uh, anytime there's the possibility of reaching any of the cache blocks which are in the second position third position becomes absolute and so you get the compilation error just like in the earlier case so this is the uh, this is the older uh, code from where I have uh, you know copied this portion of the code and you can see after the runtime exception there was also an exception class so let me just remove this array index out of order exceptions uh, and index out of order exception cases and uh, for this uh, array traversal method uh, let me just have two cache blocks one is runtime exception the other is the exception uh, the other cache block contains the exception uh, now I can see a compilation error and the compilation error the reason is uh, because uh, probably I missed uh, the curly braces for the try block so let's put the, the curly braces over there and the error will you know So as you can see runtime exception is in the first cache block and then exception is in the second cache block and we also know that exception is the parent class of the runtime exception. So if we you know try to you know alter the alter the sequence of the cache blocks and try to experiment a while let's see what happens uh, but first let's you know Let's just remove this you know, error compilation error for the, for the curly braces and the error goes and uh, instead of runtime exception let me just try throwable over here so is something which is the parent class of both the time exception as well as exception class so that means this particular cache block is good enough to catch anything just anything whether it's via error it's via check exception it's via uncheck exception if instead of this throwable if we would had runtime exception then that would have mean meant that only the unchecked exception which are the child classes of runtime exception those uh, would have been 
come under the ambit of this cache block and they would only be called by this particular cache block. If we had uh, the exception as uh, 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 as something in place of this variable, then that would mean that we have uh, we want to catch all the exceptions which are checked exceptions and not and uh, because all the runtime exceptions are also you know subclasses of this uh, exception class, so that would also mean that we are trying to catch every type of exception, whether checked or unchecked, except the the errors. But the sequence are very important. Uh, we have to maintain the sequence. So if we want to keep the runtime exception in the first cache uh, cache block, then uh, we want we will probably would want to keep the uh, the exception in the second cache block and the throwable in the last cache block to uh, make our code compile. Otherwise, uh, the code if the if the list is you know upside down, the code will not compile. Here in this code, uh, what we have done is this is something we are experiment we are trying to experiment with the error and uh, uh, because uh, uh, it's better to reference uh, the reference variable with the uh, with the super type. So I have choose to refer it back to this class. Just I press the control uh, shift and O and you know what it has shown, shown me the options uh, of the list uh, uh, list entities and uh, I, I was interested in Java or Util list so I choose that one there was a conflict between three three different classes so that was the one I needed so I choose that one and uh, what we can see is that this is a array list of basically uh, of the type is string. The generic says that uh, we can put uh, anything uh, in this uh, array list, but uh, but a string. That means we cannot put anything apart from a string. So this is a dynamic array which is going to hold string objects. And then uh, we have a for loop which is starting from i equal to zero and for a very long long value. And it says a string str is equal to new string object object is a string value and then i i is something which is a varying value the integer value in the first iteration it's zero in second iteration it's one and two and so on until that long value five zero 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 so on that long value is reached so that means uh, every time the content of this string object that will be created in the loop in each and every iteration that the value will be different say object 0, object 1, object 2, object 3 and object 4 and so on the string value will be different and there is a, there is a very interesting thing uh, about the string is that the new keyword is basically the one which forces to create a new object every time uh, we know that uh, string has got uh, equal to operator overloaded although operator overloading is not permissible in java but equal to operator, uh, the string class and the and the wrapper class has got equal to operator overloaded, overloaded uh, by the Java developer for us, and that that means that I can say string str is equal to under double quotation some value, right? Directly, say double quotation object plus i. But in that case, what happens? That that particular syntax has a difference. If I do not say the new keyword, it's not guaranteed that a new object will be created. Because in that case, what will happen that if the particular object is already existing in the string object pool, that part, uh, particular object reference value will be assigned to the, uh, this str variable and new object reference variable will not be assigned. But when we put specifically and specifically, specifically the new keyword, to create a string object by calling the constructor of the string and passing what we want to create uh, uh, the string element so that guarantees us that every time uh, within the uh, iteration a new object will be created and the reference variable to that particular object will be assigned to the to this str reference variable although every time you know this str variable the reference variable keeps on changing to pointing to a new new object but what happens is uh, there will be a lot of objects which are created and they will be uh, in the memory until they are garbage collected you can see this uh, uh, virtual machine error extends the error 
and the out of memory error extend the virtual machine error so error is extended from the throwable class so, so we can see that the error could also be cached just like the checked or the unchecked exception but this out of the memory exception is one of the virtual memory exception uh, that means that the virtual memory is full of memory and uh, in that case uh, you know the program terminates so actually if you keep uh, this program running for hours I don't know how many uh, hours you need to run depending upon the size of your uh, you know uh, RAM uh, it will uh, some some day some some after some hours uh, the memory will exhaust and you will see this error coming up so uh, now this is an error this is not exception typically this is not exception not a checked exception this is not an uh, unchecked exception this is an error which is directly derived from the survival class and uh, there, there is there is a difference between uh, uh, just like uh, we have got a difference between the checked exception and the unchecked exception uh, and the difference was that in, in the case of unchecked exception we were free to basically uh, uh, handle the exception by putting a try and catch block or we didn't have any obligation as well if we do not want to uh, handle it, we were free to not to handle it and let the caller of the uh, of the routine basically handle it, or ultimately let it be passed to the uh, to the JVM and finally you will see the stack trace. But in the case of a check reception, we have seen that it was a mandatory thing for us to basically provide a try and catch block or rather handle the exception. Uh, in the case of error, uh, it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory that we need to provide a try and catch block, and we can uh, go without a provided, providing the handler that is a try and catch block. And in fact, the truth is that we should not even try to put a handler for for a, for an error, because error is something which is of a different nature from exception. Exception comes from any of the problem which is basically inside your code that comes at the runtime. So. Uh, so that means if there is some problem, say for example, if there is a check exception, find not found exception, then you can provide alternative path, uh, a network path to the to the same file copy. Uh, but if uh, in the case of an error, if the memory exhausts, then you cannot do anything alternative. Rather, you have to you know uh, shut down your program, shut down your computer, pull out your you know RAM. Maybe you may put you, you might need to put a larger RAM. And you might need to assign more memory to your JVM for running this particular program. So this is beyond the context of the of the you know uh, uh, control of your program where you can provide some alternative path. So you can see the program is started running. Uh, there is a spelling mistake uh, for this created uh, message, uh, and you can see the objects they are being created uh, very very fast. It will keep on creating it will keep on creating to that particular very, very large value until my memory exhaust and i'm just closing it because it will take hours to basically show up the error but at some point of time uh, when your memory is full and the garbage, garbage collection is not able to you know clean all those memory with that space so you will see that particular error coming up Now let's move to something something real. Uh, let's try to you know understand the whole concept, how this concept of exception binds with the real application. And uh, so let's have a, a program that is about uh, say for example a bank and particular program. is written to manage the accounts of the account holders or the customers so there are few classes in this sequence we have got account dot java class we have got uh, account dot account type dot java which is actually an interface then we have got a customer dot java class as you can see here in the list under the package exception that's for demo and then we have we have got insufficient fund exception this is one of the exception 
which is a custom exception that we have created just like just like index out of bound exception which was provided by the Java Java people. Here index insufficient fund exception is the one which we have created because it belongs to our domain and as the name indicates that this particular exception will uh, you know capture a situation an abnormal situation where the fund is insufficient if I try to withdraw something from the fund of my account. So see the account class, the account class as per the object printed program padding, we start thinking with the data, account number, it has got account number of the type of string, it has got account type of type of string, maybe a fixed deposit account, maybe a current account, maybe a saving account and so on. It has got a beneficiary, the name of the account holder, it has got a boolean, uh, you know, variable is joint account. If this is true, that means there is a joint account holder and then the distinct joint account holder name must be populated. It has uh, a float value account balance, which gives the current balance and the status whether this account is uh, active or inactive. And we have got the getter setup method for all these variables and we have got certain, you know, uh, constructor uh, for this particular account class. You see, uh, you see the setter and the getter methods over here. Apart from the constructor, we have got two different, you know, method. One is the deposit method, and the other is the withdraw method. These are the two important methods of our interest. You see, if we pass a value, that is a floating value, which is called a deposit amount, as indicated by the name of the variable deposit amount variable, uh, as a parameter to the deposit method. If we pass a particular amount, then what happens? This dot set account balance uh, method is called, which is the setter method of this particular class this indicates the object of this particular class at a certain time and that is set to get account balance that means the current account balance whatever is there plus deposited amount so whatever the amount that we want to deposit for well, that amount will be added to the current account balance and then the whole thing is set as a new account balance so we don't have a problem when we want to deposit something to the bank, bank is always ready to take everything, it's happy. But the problem happens when we want to withdraw something or we want to take out from the bank. So in that case, the bank is going to check that if the account balance is basically for the particular account is greater than the withdrawal amount. That means if I am asking for 1000 rupees and I have got just 500 rupees in my account, so that means the account balance is greater than withdrawal amount so it's not a problem it's not a problem in that case i will just set account balance as this as the current account balance minus the withdrawal amount and uh, my account balance will be directed from 1000 rupees to 500 400 whatever i want to withdraw and the rest of the amount will be set as a new account balance but the problem occurs when I want to withdraw the amount which is actually not greater than the withdrawal amount which is actually less than the withdrawal amount the condition is greater than or equal to in fact so if the account balance is less than the withdrawal amount that is if i want to withdraw thousand rupees and i have got the account balance as 500 rupees in that case i should not be allowed to withdraw the amount <coughs> and then I must get an exception and the exception is basically an abnormal condition and in the form of this particular class insufficient for an exception you can see here throw keyword is used and here throws it's another keyword that is being used this throw keyword basically is used to you know actually uh, create a new exception and throw the exception so before coming back to the particular code, let's try to see this insufficient fund exception class once. And uh, see, this insufficient fund exception class is basically the one which is extended from the exception class. And there is no runtime exception class in between. So that means this is a checked exception. So that means if this the particular method which is going to throw this exception, if that particular method 
that is the withdraw method if that method is being called it is mandatory for the caller to actually put a try and catch block to handle this exception if i would have be willing to make it a, a unchecked or a runtime exception instead of exception i must have extended with the runtime exception and that would have become a runtime exception or unchecked exception exception <clears throat> so this insufficient fund exception has got got a variable name as deficient amount uh, that is the amount with which you are deficient deficit and uh, then uh, then a particular method a getter method to get the deficit amount this is just a normal class so i can i can define my own variable i can define my own methods and this has got a constructor insufficient fund exception in which i am going to pass the amount which is less uh, than the required amount and that particular amount is set to this particular variable which could be later on retrieved from by calling the get deficit amount method so uh, the important point to note is that we have chosen to make this insufficient fund exception as a checked exception in our case that means uh, the calling code will have mandatorily have to put a try and catch block unless and until it doesn't do that it will get a compilation error let's go to the customer class and if you see the customer class uh, you see uh, account my account my account is the name of the variable is the type account i am creating a new account and inside the new account i am using a constructor which is taking four parameters and uh, the account type is basically uh, uh, is uh, captured in the interface account type is basically containing uh, some some you know uh, uh, you know constants you know that uh, everything whatever is defined in interface is public static and final so that means everything whatever value is holding in the account type that is a constant so if i define it uh, with the convention say uh, fixed account or provident for account or a saving account whatever the convention is you go with the capital letter, letter and every uh, subsequent word has a test code uh, in between and that indicates it's a constant it's a constant it's a final variable and because i'm calling just on the name of the of the entity that is interface interface so that means it's a uh, it's a static variable so this gives me uh, 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 this gives me for the probability of making any mistakes for like a typo mistake if i instead of typing uh, uh, the right spelling if i type if I type the wrong spelling, that may give me error. So, what I will do, I will just type account type dot and control space. It will show me all the three options, and I will choose one of them. Then, uh, then we have got the name of the beneficiary, and then the initial amount balance as five thousand, and uh, the account is created. Then, uh, I have printed the account balance, which 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 uh, was supposed to be 5000 because I have deposited 5000 while creating my account then I try to withdraw 10,000 rupees out of those 5000 rupees and that means that I will get the exception uh, with the message that you are deficient with the uh, amount 5000 and then the finally block uh, finally block is the one which uh, basically uh, is required to do any operation after the try and the catch so whether whether the exception occurs or whether the exception do not occur finally is the block which is guaranteed to run so with try block block it is mandatory that you put either a catch block or a finally block or both but after try block you have to put one of at least one of them otherwise you will get a compilation error so finally basically says i have just printed a message over here say inside the first finally block but finally block is basically used to clear up the thing the mess that probably you might have created for example if i created the scanner class object the scanner is scanner is equal to new scanner class system dot in and so on and then finally when i am done with i want to close that is scan dot i want to call the scan dot close method so in that case i will try to you know do that in the finally class or similarly if i open a file for read and write operation and then once it, it is done everything is done then finally block is the one where i will put uh, the file close operation so that the resources are cleared 
So finally, is the block which is guaranteed to run no matter what happens, whether the exception occurs or whether the exception does not occur. So so we have tried to you know uh, deposit. Uh, in the first case, uh, we have tried to withdraw the ten thousand amount, which, uh, which is guaranteed to give a give us an exception because we did have that much of amount. So let's put this particular code in the comment and. Uh, Let's see, it is giving me a, a compilation error. My account dot withdraw method is giving me a compilation error because this is a checked exception. So I must put a try and catch block to avoid the compilation error. Try to run this application and see the output that we get is new account balance is six thousand. Uh, initially, I have to open the account with five thousand, then I have deposited one thousand, then the account balance becomes six thousand. Uh, when we try to withdraw a ten thousand, I was told that you are deficient with the amount four thousand. This was the point when the exception was thrown, and then. Uh, Finally, block was reached because finally block will, will reach anyway, whether I get the exception or I do not get the exception. Then, uh, uh, then the next statement that is new account balance is equal to 6000, that is the account balance at the time because withdraw, withdraw didn't happen, so the account balance remains the same as 6000. Then we try to withdraw 5000 again, and uh, then uh, you know we reach to the second finally block because exception is however not thrown, but finally block will be reached. And then the finally, and then final, we see the, we print the account balance as one thousand. So this was the overall output of the program. Uh, you can, uh, you can try attempting the program. Uh, I will send you the the source code of this program. Try to run it. Try to understand it very thoroughly. Uh, the most important point to understand this particular uh, you know application is uh, how to create a you know. Uh, uh, exception class itself custom exception effect uh, another point to you know understand basically here is uh, which uh, we need to focus upon is that you know this particular method you have you you could see that this particular withdrawal method this uh, in the case when the amount that we want to withdraw is uh, uh, is greater than the account balance in that is the s condition the exception is thrown that is the abnormal condition happened and we do not want to you know uh, uh, let uh, the customer withdraw the amount but we want to throw an exception and uh, when the exception is thrown so that means this is the point from where the the problem has occurred this is the point when we when we start telling that okay you have you there has something bad has happened so we use the throw keyword to actually uh, you know start uh, i mean uh, to actually to pop up the exception which will be popped up at the position where this particular withdraw method is being called that is from the customer class. So when I say throw new insufficient fund exception, basically I am creating a new instance of insufficient fund exception with uh, values of the deficient amount being passed to the constructor because I am passing withdrawal amount minus get account balance. That means withdrawal amount is always larger than the get account balance. Then only I am I'm trying to throw the exception so that is indicating the deficient amount. So I'm passing the deficient amount inside the constructor of the insufficient fund exception. So this throw keyword indicates that I'm actually throwing the exception at this particular 
line, line number 74. And there is a key, key, keyword you can see throws, which is the part of the signature of the withdraw method, that is the prototype of the withdraw method that is written on the first line of the withdraw method, right? This throw says, this line says, this particular method, which is of the nature of public, it returns a float value that how much amount has been, you know, remaining, the account balance, and withdraw the name of the method. It takes a parameter, what amount you want to withdraw, and then it says it may throw insufficient fund exception. So that means this particular method throws the insufficient fund exception. So this is an indication for a particular method. If you see a throws keyword after a particular method, in the, the part of the signature of the particular method, you immediately know that this particular method may throw up exception. So better I should guard against this exception if I want to by putting a try and catch block. So you can declare throws for both checked exception as well as unchecked exception. There is no restriction in that. This is just to give an indication. Uh, so, so the customer class basically as you can see is aware of that uh, it must you know basically handle the exception because the nature of the exception itself is a checked exception. You see, whenever it's called, uh, you know, withdraw method, so it, this is the particular line of the customer.java class, the line number 16, which is actually calling the withdraw method. So because withdraw method throws an exception, you can imagine that the, part, the particular line which indicates throw new insufficient fund exception, that particular line is actually creating the exception and that exception is being popped up to the caller code at line number 16 of the customer.java class. Now, when the, that particular exception is popped up here, because this particular line or the routine is under the try block, it goes to the first catch block, which matches the type of the nature of the exception that has occurred, and that is insufficient fund exception, it will come over here. So it will print you the message what efficient with the amount. So the, we, we choose to make it a, a checked exception because we have many reasons. Uh, if we don't have, uh, if we see that the customer doesn't have the money uh, in its in his account to withdraw, then basically uh, we should print uh, uh, probably if it's an ATM, you know, this application device for uh, for ATM machine, say it should split the slip or you should get an SMS or a mail indicating that you attempted to withdraw the particular amount and you don't have sufficient balances in your account. So please take care of it so the developer believes that there must be some alternative path some alternative routine or the flow of control if this particular problem happens so that is why we choose to make it a checked exception so that's all about exceptions let's finish our discussion over here